Hi everyone, this is Claudio Serrano, official voice of Santander Te Cuenta podcast, this time using artificial intelligence. Santander Te Cuenta, a podcast with questions and ideas to help understand the modern world. Artificial intelligence, the opportunities of a disruptive technology. Given the proliferation of services centered around artificial intelligence and the associated media hype, Santander Te Cuenta takes a look at the opportunities presented by this revolutionary technology. How is this technology already being used in different sectors? What possibilities does using artificial intelligence in our daily lives open up? What new jobs will be created? How will humans and machines work in increasingly close collaboration? Coinciding with the launch of the Santander X Global Challenge, the AI revolution by Santander Universities, and in collaboration with Microsoft, Ovidio Cordero, Banco Santander Communications Director, interviews Jens Hansen, General Manager Data and AI EMEA at Microsoft. Hi, Jens. How are you? Hey, I'm great. Thanks for having me. Super excited about today. A little early for me here in New York. Just arrived last night, so a little jet-lagged, but excited about the conversation. Great. Well, uh, right now, as you know, uh, Jens, Santander Universities is launching the, the Artificial Intelligence Santander X Challenge uh, with, with Microsoft, your company. And we thought it was the perfect time uh, to, to chat a bit about artificial intelligence, no? which is something we're really interested in. Yeah, no, absolutely. I think right now it's it's a really exciting market out there with a lot of like public awareness uh, on a topic like uh, you know OpenAI and and similar technologies all in that space. And I'm super excited about the partnership of Santander and Microsoft, not just because you guys are amazing customers, but also as we work on initiatives like Santander X together. The biggest talking point about artificial intelligence at the moment is Chat GPT, a revolution that has impressed the whole world. Microsoft is investing a lot and launching products that incorporate it. This technology has already been applied effectively in very different industries. What the stage of maturity is AI at? Yeah, I think to your point, I mean, it has been already applied for a longer time in a variety of industries and scenarios, right? And some of the, the subdomains in the broader space of AI have been around for a couple of years, actually, right? Just think about, you know, predictive models, pricing models. So we saw adoption of that already in industries like financial services, healthcare, transportation for a longer time. I mean, a lot has been done already over the last couple of years for companies to figure out how can we interact smarter with our customers. Uh, but it's still early stage, though, in, in a lot of these scenarios. Um, but basically, I mean, the, the number one question is always is how can we give our customers the best experience in every customer interaction, at every touch point, uh, we get in contact with our customers. And so artificial intelligence you know, has helped with that uh, for a longer time. With the aim of treating AI as an opportunity rather than a threat, uh, new AI-related jobs are, are appearing within a large number of business sectors. What opportunities are you seeing come up in real time? Yeah, that's a really interesting question because there's also a lot of you know concerns and fear in that dialogue sometimes, right? Uh, specifically uh, around the advancements of AI. I think we sort of have to distinguish between how ready are companies to fully embrace AI or society. And so a lot of jobs right now that are super hot in the market are not specifically directly on AI, but more on the broader data context, right? Because, um, you know, still in a variety of scenarios, customers, companies, organizations, and the likes need to, you know, get their data, so to speak, in the right format, in the right shape uh, to enable AI scenarios down the road. And then, you know, it's, it's kind of hard to predict what jobs will come out of this um, AI revolution, if you will. I mean, nobody could have predicted like 10 years ago that we have social media managers and, you know, other roles like cybersecurity specialists that we see nowadays being everywhere, right? So I think that some early indication is the, the data management space, analytics is, is still super hot. Like that needs a lot of investment in terms of we need more people in that space. Uh, there's still shortage of you know, experience out there. And then also like uh, the whole topic of responsible AI, AI ethics, how do we deal with AI, uh, you know, at a company level, at a broader society level, like that is really some, some areas where we see already, you know, new job postings hitting the market as of right now. Um, for our sector in particular, the financial sector, what opportunities do you think AI offers in terms of improving the quality of uh, services that customers receive? Yeah, I think to me, ultimately, you know, it's, it's all about the customer at the end of the day, right? And so the new generation of customers also come, you know, with new heightened expectations on how, you know, well, uh, you know, a, a service company 
in the financial space uh, supports them in in their journeys, right? And so I think in one headline, it's like about how do we improve the quality of the service, but also uh, very important, how do we make this more personalized, right? Um, and that could be, you know, um, goal-oriented financial advice, but it could also be um, as a customer help, like the company should understand me better and what my needs are at this moment in time and then interact with me in a, in a smart way, right? So I think th- that is for sure in the financial sector the, the most common theme uh, right now. Uh, I mean, there's more technical applications if you think about something like risk assessment, uh, fraud detection, stuff like that. But like I think more visible for the average person would be all things around customer interactions. Okay. Does AI always depend on a human to ensure that there are no errors or can it be fully trusted for some tasks? Yeah, it's it's a really good question. And I think the answer to that will evolve over time to some extent, right? I mean, right now uh, in Microsoft, we firmly believe it's like AI, the primary task of AI is to augment human capabilities. And you can see this with the latest announcement we did in the office space around Copilot. I think that is a good way to describe the concept per se, where we basically say, hey, a human ultimately makes the decision, but we want to make that human more productive and more intelligent by giving them you know, access to advanced AI technologies while they're making those decisions. And I think for now, you know, that, that is really the, the key focus and you know, is in line with sort of the state of, of AI as a technology, as an emerging technology. I mean, over time, obviously, there will be more, let's say, routine tasks that can be automated and driven fully by AI. And there will be other areas where, you know, the human decision-making process uh, is always going to be a key part of it. I'm a journalist, Jens, and I I previously studied translation. A lot of friends say to me that automatic translation has been saying to me for years that automatic translation will kill the profession. I don't see it that way, but it's true that it can be really useful for improving productivity. There are things that machines can't translate, like double entenders, uh, sarcasm, or metaphors. A machine translating those would be worrying, wouldn't it? It could be like ma- the matrix. <laughs> yeah, no, that's true. So I think, <laughs> um, yeah, I mean, it, it's it's that, but also the, the broader field of journalism. I think a lot of people right now are trying to understand what the implications are um, with, you know, basically technologies like, you know, OpenAI, ChatGPT, uh, all, all, almost having a creative element to it. But to your point, there's just things that right now, AI can't reliably do, right? And, and that is in, in the broader space of journalism is like investigative, you know, research. Like how do we connect the dots between sometimes very complex scenarios? That is obviously something that is really right, right, as of right now, not really something, you know, AI could deliver. And the, the subtle nuances in terms of context, culture, and all, all that in sort of translating text is, is certainly in that field, right? I mean, over time, I mean, we have always seen advancement in all of these areas. So you could also argue, hey, it's just a, a matter of time, uh, you know, when that uh, will become, uh, you know, better in the sense that, you know, AI can translate more text in a more meaningful way. Uh, but then again, we free up, you know, basically resources to do better, you know, journalistic work in general, right? So that is always like the the old conversation of this technology hurt, automation hurt. I think ultimately history has told us that's not really the case necessarily, right? So, um, I, you know, I, I don't feel like we should be stressed about it, to your point. Mm-hmm. Yes. So you just mentioned ChatGPT Ch- is clearly the biggest talking point at the moment, as we just discussed. Microsoft is investing. Could you tell us a bit about uh, wh- how we are going to start using ChatGPT naturally in the applications we use at work? Yeah. So, I mean, that's such an interesting piece, right? Because with ChatGPT, it's basically the first time that AI got mainstream attention. I think before ChatGPT, it was sort of almost impossible to really conceptualize what AI was supposed to do. Uh, you know, you had that field of data science. It all sounds like very technical and, you know, you have to have like, a couple PhDs in, in the background doing that stuff. With, with ChatGPT, obviously, everyone could experience for the first time, right, uh, what the power of AI is. And keep in mind, that's still early stage, right? So the, 
the versions you're going to see in a year from now, two years, five years from now, will be at a whole different level. But I think that has really you know, changed the game as in it has crossed into the mainstream mindset, uh, if you will. People could play around with it and could experience it. Now, I think from a Microsoft perspective, we've seen this a long time coming, right? We've invested very early on in the company that's behind ChatGPT and other services, OpenAI. Uh, we made an investment a couple of years ago, doubled down basically this year, uh, you know, with a huge investment into that company because we believe that, you know, fundamental technology they're developing will ultimately land in all of the productivity components that we offer as a company. So think about something like just, you know, writing a document in Word, right? Being on a Teams call and actually getting a summary, uh, like a meaningful summarization of, of a one-hour call in terms of meeting notes, right? Like, like that's super powerful and a real productivity gain for a lot of people, right? So the, the technology itself has multi, like so many different fields of application that over time we will see that also landing in all of the applications that Microsoft is offering, as we would call it, like first-party products. Uh, and then our customers like you will build, you know, on our platform their own services to make sure their own, you know, processes can benefit from from that. The most obvious use case example right now, obviously, is like Chat GPT, as in, oh, I can chat with AI, right? And that is also, I think, interesting because that takes the old concept of like the Alexas of the world, of the series of the world, where you know, quite dumb at the time. To be honest, if you compare that right now with the capabilities that you know, ChatGPT can deliver. Uh, so the like that is the the first time actually you can really have an interaction with AI in a meaningful way. It, you know, it keeps track of the context of the conversation and so forth. So th- that is the most obvious one and can obviously be used in customer service scenarios and stuff like that. But also, we you know, we see really end-to-end processes that can benefit from, you know, embedding OpenAI as a technology into these end-to-end processes, right? One example of that, for instance, would be a fully automated claims management process where, you know, the AI, you know, takes care of the documents, takes care of the customer back and forth, like the interaction, the documentation, summarizes what happened in the contact center whenever the customer called, right? So I think uh, ChatGPT is the most obvious one, as in uh, everybody can sort of understand what that is, uh, but ultimately it will find its way into a lot of processes. Mm -hmm. And if we think about it a bit more broadly, what do you think artificial intelligence is going? What will we see in a few years' time? Yeah, I mean, it's it, it's a bit hard to predict, A, because I don't have a crystal ball, right? B, is like the the speed of innovation is just increasing, right? And, and you can see this, like we had ChatGPT 3.5, now uh, we have, you know, uh, f- version 4. I think we will see a lot of, like, new stuff come in uh, over the next, you know, 6, 12, 18 months. So that's a bit hard to predict. But I think the two areas that are most, most important to me, one is there will be new advanced forms of that human-machine collaboration, right? Because we, we need to make sure it is super seamlessly embedded in all these, you know, productivity uh, processes that, you know, everyday workers face, as in you should not even notice you interact with an AI, I guess is, is the point, right? Because... Um, th- that is the, the interaction between the human and the machine that should become as seamless as possible. So I think that is the big next thing in AI that we need to get right across the industry over the next two years or so, because that's really what will drive and fuel further adoption of the technology, right? It should be transparent in most contexts, in, in most of the contexts, you know, the human should not even know per se that this is driven by AI. It should be just a smarter, more, you know, intuitive way of interacting with the system. Mm-hmm. I'm thinking about the challenge of regulation, and there are various theories, as you know. Elon Musk has asked for regulation, while Mark yeah. Zuckerberg from Facebook has been less keen to it. Actually, Elon Musk had a, quite an alarmist outlook no, in which machines are dangerous because they are much smarter yeah. than human beings. No, It sounds a bit... You know, well, what do you think? What do you make of that? Yeah, no, I mean, th- this is such a complex conversation, which is, for the most part, um, th- there's so much oversimplification in that conversation. It- it's almost, you know, sometimes to an extent a bit, uh, you know, painful because there's some folks, to your point, almost propagating like doomsday scenarios. You know, some people sort of feel like that's the Skynet scenario from the Terminator movies, right, where the machines take over and, you know, they make decisions for us. That is 
probably a bit more extreme. Um, I'm not sure that is a, a very realistic scenario. Um, and then others kind of feel like we should not regulate this at all, to your point, right? I think, the, the, as always, the, probably the truth is in the middle somewhere, as in also depends a lot on the application of AI, right? I mean, uh, certainly we need to be cautious whenever we feel like there's going to be an automatic decision-making process that has little or no human oversight, um, right? And there could be even something simple like credit decisions or insurance decisions, right? Where you kind of feel like, well, do we really want to do that? As in, are we 100% sure there is no bias in the data? Is that really, you know, a fair process? Can we guarantee it's a fair process? So, you know, it's a very complex conversation at the end of the day. Um, what, what's for sure, I think, humanity doesn't want to miss out on the improvements that will come, you know, with AI. I, I mean, I just read an article where, you know, doctors were, you know, uh, AI was, you know, two years uh, earlier able to detect breast cancer than any physician possibly could do. I mean, that's something obviously you don't want to miss out on, right? So I, I think it's kind of dangerous to just dismiss AI and put this in in the box of evil, right? But it's, I think it's also dangerous to let it loose and not think through. I think that the, the biggest op opportunity, but also issue as here right now is almost education on the topic, right? Because A, AI is such a broad term. We really need to break it down at some point and to have more precision in the conversation. But also there's a lot of, you know, corporate um, uh, decision makers, but there's also like in the policy making domain, like there's more education needed, honestly, right? Because how can you come up with good policies and, and good regulations if you don't fully understand the technology and that technology is changing and advancing at such a pace, right? So I think that is honestly the, the bigger issue to me. Like how do we make sure we have a good open dialogue in all these forums that is also sort of, um, you know, working at the speed of the development and advancement these technologies will see over time because it's fairly hard to regulate something you don't understand, I guess, right? So that, like, that, that is my primary concern. And also, like, that's an area where uh, Microsoft does a lot. Like, we offer a lot of our best practices, recommendations, lessons learned to policymakers. And, you know, we really want to have that dialogue because I think to some extent we're a bit surprised yeah. that we don't see more public dialogue on that issue, right? Because it, it is going to be an important conversation and will become increasingly important. Um, but yeah, I think it start, it's all starts with education at the end of the day. Yeah, absolutely. Very interesting. Yeah. Finally, what would be your advice for someone listening to this who is afraid of the changes being foreseen with respect to artificial intelligence? Yeah, I mean, that, that, it, it, I mean something we, we should and we have to take seriously, honestly, right? Because, um, I mean, I even see this in, in my private circles, like talking to, I don't know, my mom or my friends, right, who are not necessarily as deeply immersed <laughs> into the technology than I am. Um, and again, and I think there, there's almost like the need for people to wanting to understand a bit more about, you know, what falls into that umbrella of AI, into the different, you know, areas of application, uh, so I think th there is an element, again, of education that's necessary. I think we, as an industry, we need to do a better job being probably a bit more transparent in terms of what's coming and how we feel about this and how we think about this. Um, but ultimately, I, you know, I, I don't feel like there should be broad concern uh, because, again, like the... Uh, the positives are so strong in terms of, you know, it will impact everybody's life in a very positive way at the end of the day. So, so people should, you know, take this into account. Uh, but, you know, I, I think it's a healthy uh, thing that people are a bit cautious because it's such a new technology and something we sort of need to wrap our, you know, head around. Uh, and that probably takes a couple of years before everybody is on that same page. Very good. Very interesting. Thanks. Really good conversation. Perfect. Yeah, really good. Thank, Thank you very much, Jens. Hope to see you soon. And let's see how the Santander Excel goes. I'm sure yeah. it's going to be interesting. All right. Cool. If you want to hear more interesting conversations, head to the Santander Tequenta channel on YouTube, Spotify, or Apple Podcasts.